Hello, I'm Jason Hahn with Screen Rant, and today I have a very special guest from my favorite anime streaming uh, company, Crunchyroll. Uh, he is actually the Senior Vice President of Global Commerce, uh, Mitchell Berger. Uh, so thank you so much for joining us today, man. Uh, I know we're gonna got some pretty exciting stuff to talk about, including uh, Spy Family, Code White, coming to theaters near you. Yeah, well, we're very excited about it. And thanks for having me, by the way. Oh man, it's our pleasure. Uh, yeah, I'm actually gonna be speaking to some of the English voice cast later this week. So great, uh, Spy Family all this week. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. But uh, it's a great cast. It's a phenomenal cast too. They're great folks. Oh, good. I'm looking forward to that. Um, well, uh, just to kind of give people a little bit of context uh, and a, kind of a personal thank you to you as well. Um, uh, Mitchell here has played a pretty big part in getting a lot of people's favorite anime franchises in movie theaters and has really helped get it anime as popular as it has in the last few years. Uh, he's worked with series like My Hair Academia, Dragon Ball, um, and uh, honestly, some of those movie theater experiences with those films have been some of my personal favorites. Uh, and we'll get into those a little bit later with some of these questions, but uh, we'll go ahead and dive into this first one here. Uh, Spy Family is a series that's, in my opinion, has mastered the art of comedic dramatic irony. Uh, for those who don't know, that's kind of a you know, if one character doesn't know what another character is doing, but the audience does, it kind of helps build that tension. Um, and Spy Family is kind of built on that whole aspect. Uh, but because it's a series that I recommend, because of that, it's a series that I recommend to a lot of people who've been hesitant to try anime. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you feel like people who have not watched any anime or the first two seasons of the series should give Code White, Code White a try and why? Absolutely. Um, and, and you're exactly right. I think that Spy Family as a franchise is a great entry point uh, for a lot of folks. It's got a lot of mass appeal. It's very accessible to anime interested folks. Uh, the great thing about this film, though, is it is a standalone. Um, you don't have to have watched the series, although if you'd love to, we'd love for you to come watch it on Crunchyroll. But you don't have to. Um, it, it's not necessary to really understand. We, it, it's fully contained. It'll set the story up. You'll enjoy it for what it is. Um, and then I hope that if you do enjoy it, you do want to dive into the series because uh, I think this movie is a great representation to your point of exactly what the flavor of that series is. And it is something really special and unique uh, that we love. So yeah, absolutely. Everybody should come out and give it a try. No prior knowledge necessary. Come and enjoy the film and I think you'll have a good time. I, I agree. Uh, I'm anxious to watch it myself. And uh, I actually, that's one thing I appreciate about the series and how well it balances comedy and action and drama. Mm -hmm. I would definitely say it leans more on the comedy side, but that's, you know, kind mm -hmm. of a nice refreshing thing from so many battle action a animes and such like that, um, which kind of goes into my next question. Um, there are still a lot of people in the world who look at anime as weird <laughs> and something that they could never get into. Uh, what are some animes that you highly recommend for first time anime viewers? A great question, a tough one to answer, uh, because really, you know, anime is it's a medium, not a genre. So that question, so I, I, I liken that question if someone came to you and said, hey, I'm going to start watching movies. What movie should I start with? Because there's literally a little bit of everything. Now, having said that, I will tell you there's there's a lot of good entry points uh, based on kind of what you already like. So you know, if you're a fan of things like uh, the X-Men or Avengers or those type of films, try My Hero Academia, I think it plays well. If you're a fan of Harry Potter, uh, try Mashal, music, or music, Magic and Muscles, uh, a great, great thing in their world. If you like things like Jumanji, which are really like isekai shows where you're trapped in another world, there's hundreds and hundreds of those. Uh, but, you know, start with something like Sword Art Online to, to get a feel there. Um, there's there's really something for everybody. I, I always recommend Cowboy Bebop. I think it's a classic. One of the best soundtracks in the entire world. Uh, very, very accessible to a Western audience. You know, if, you, if you've watched Firefly, Serenity, things like that, you're going to see a lot of things that are that are comfortable for you there. But just a great, great series in general. So, I mean, I could go on forever. Everything. I mean, look, if you like romance, comedy, drama, there's something for everyone. Um, what I would really say is just give it a try because you'll find something you love. Um, yeah, that's actually a question I had later on, but we'll go ahead and move that up the list uh, because it's just so relevant to what we're talking about. Um, as you said, anime is not a specific genre, but an entire art medium filled with genres. Mm -hmm. uh, while battle shonens like uh, Dragon Ball, um, 
One Piece, which I, I would say is a lot broader, <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. and yep. uh, My Hero Academia and such, uh, they are, you know, one of the most popular series out there. Um, what other series or other series like romance shoujos and relaxing slice of life series uh, are also beginning to get more popular? Uh, what kind of challenges mm -hmm. from the Crunchyroll experience uh, or what, what kind of challenges does Crunchyroll uh, have in catering to that wide range of fans of different anime genres? Mm -hmm. I don't think it's a challenge as much as I think it's an opportunity. Um, you know, like you said, I think there there was a a time where people perceived anime as it's just a bunch of fighting. It's yelling and fighting and screaming and then some more yelling and fighting and screaming, which is great. I love those shows. There's a lot of fun. Uh, but what we've seen over the last, you know, 10 years or so is that the fan base has grown so much globally and so much demographically. It's it's really everybody now. Um, it, it It is male and female. It is all nationalities. It's all walks of life. It's all ages. So what we found there is but when you've got that diverse of a fan base, you need to find diverse offerings because not everybody likes the same thing. Again, it's it's an entire medium with all these genres in it. So it's been a great opportunity for us to branch out and find shows that we know people want to see, um, that you know are are appealing, are different, are have a unique voice or a unique point of view or a unique story to tell. I mean, one of the shows that, that I've been watching with my daughter that I absolutely love that I think is just right down the alley is Free Run. Um, a really, really smart, intelligent, different kind of show um, that, that makes you think. And I love that about it. It's still got some, some you know, humor in it. It's got some action in it. But it's, it really is a different take kind of on the fantasy genre of, you know, what happens after the quest is over um, and, and deals with things like immortality and mortality. And so there's just so many things there. And, and what we've had the opportunity to do is find all those stories that the creators in Japan are telling and bring them to this global audience. It's been a phenomenal uh, opportunity for us. Oh, absolutely. And it's, uh, you know, the audience is just getting bigger and bigger because of your good choices on which series to bring <laughs> over. Um, but uh, you, you've name dropped a few excellent series that I can also highly recommend. Uh, so this might be another pretty tough question for you. So I apologize yeah. beforehand if uh, <laughs> this is going to upset some creators out there. But what are your favorite animes of all time and what oh. makes them special? <laughs> That is like trying to pick, you know, your favorite child. Um, <laughs> it, it is, it is really tough. I, I'll, I'll say this, um, you know, I, I mentioned Cowboy Bebop. I think it's an absolute classic that that everyone should watch once upon a time because it's just it, it is it is one of the pinnacles. Um, it's such a personal thing. I think it's hard to rank, you know, what best animes are because it's all about your personal uh, taste and things like that. You know, for me, um, I always I, I love Sword Art Online. Um, both for the story itself, but it's also one of the first shows that I got to watch with my kids that I really enjoyed watching with them. So as much of the show as the experience for me, that one will always have a, a special place in my heart. Um, Dragon Ball is obviously a behemoth in the industry. Um, Dragon Ball Resurrection F was the first movie that we released as Funimation, first one I got to work on here. So that one holds a special place in my heart. Um, but I'll tell you the last two years or so that the two titles that i've really enjoyed the most uh, and again just personal preference is not not you know saying one's better than the other solo leveling right now phenomenal show absolutely amazing show uh, uh you know the season's coming to an end i am already hungry for what's going to come next <laughs> i love that and then you know way way down that road is chainsaw man chainsaw man is one of the most fun shows that i have seen in a very long time uh you know different aggressive violent funny just it, it, a very very unique point of view and a unique story to tell um and i mean it's got a guy with chainsaws for hands in the head i mean it's 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 it is it is something different i love that about it but i mean my hero attack on titan black butler i mean yeah, i could just name thousands of shows um I think the, the thing is right now, it's a great time to be an anime fan because there's a ton of great content and there's more Demon Slayer, new season is about to start. A phenomenal, groundbreaking, you know, world changing show. Uh, it's just a great time to be a fan of anime because you have so many choices. Oh, absolutely. Great answer. <laughs> um, well, uh, kind of going back to Spy Family a little bit. Uh, who's your favorite Spy Family character and why is it Anya? 
Uh, oh, you know, I was going to say, it's got to be Anya uh, <laughs> because it's Anya. Of course it's Anya. She's amazing. Um, I just, it's such a great character. It's such a great storytelling device in the story. I think it, 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 it holds all that together. It adds that, that innocent childlike view of what's going on that you can experience as a viewer. Um, I think for me, the, the voice acting for the English dub, I just, I love Anya's voice. I just, that, that to me is Anya. It's perfectly who that character should be. Um, so yeah, what's not to love? Like I, 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 I'm just going to follow along with everybody else that yes, it is Anya because it's Anya. <laughs> well, uh, the, the answer to this next one might be a copy and paste of that, but what do you think about her character has helped her become such a breakout uh, from the series and become so popular among the anime fandom? Yeah, it, 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 you're exactly right. I just said it. It is, I think she <laughs> gives she gives audiences a really great way into the story, and she gives you a perspective that that is both childlike and not childlike because of what she can can know and, and I don't give a ton away but you know because of the way she can can extract information from those around her and and know kind of what's going on but not kind of what, what's going on um to me it's 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 almost an analog to a lot of what growing up itself is like where you're 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 playing in this world where there's all this stuff going on and you kind of know what's happening but you're also kind of figuring it out as you go and you have this childlike innocence, but you also have this maturity that's coming in and, and those kind of collide sometimes. So I think a lot of people see themselves in Anya and can relate to what that that narrative is and how it brings to the story. That's that's why I think that she's a great way into it because it it for for those who are not hardcore anime fans or those who are just fans of good stories, she's the perfect entryway into it. Um, and then once you get in, it's just a lot of fun. It, it's a great, great franchise. I agree. And uh, yeah, I'm anxious uh, to watch more. And of course, uh, season two just finished. Uh, hopefully we got another mm -hmm. season coming. Um, but uh, yeah, um, kind of another touching back on anime and movie theaters. Um, mm -hmm. Watching anime films and movie theaters on opening weekend has been some of the most fun and satisfying experiences for me. Uh, it's mm -hmm. often a collection of hardcore fans of that particular franchise. Uh, so every humorous gag hits, every dramatic <laughs> epic punch gets people excited in the theater. Uh, it, mm -hmm. it creates like a palpable energy uh, that's infectious in the movies, I think. Uh, in a way, it's kind of a validation of an entertainment medium that individuals were once mocked for enjoying. Uh, thankfully, those stereotypes have begun to melt away. Um, and uh, your company's new podcast, The Anime Effect, uh, likes to talk about that a lot too. But I'm curious on your thoughts on why do you believe American society in general has begun to become more open-minded when it comes to anime? I think at its core, it, it gets back to the stories that it tells. I mean, when, when you look at anime, broadly speaking, it's a very inclusive community. It's a very inclusive, uh, I think, set of story arcs and narratives where there's a lot of discussion about, you know, learn, learning to overcome adversity, learning to, to strive for excellence, learning to work together as a team and find your place in the world and achieve something. Uh, it's it's less sometimes about personal glory and more about, you know, the, the objective and, and what you're going to achieve. Um, and I think that as as society continues to evolve and and we continue to both be closer connected and also more disconnected through technology at the same time, um, people crave that that human contact. They crave that sense of community. They want to belong somewhere. They want to find their people. And I think what anime does is it allows people to express who they really are and who they want to be, and it allows them this this connective tissue to then gather together as a community around something that they share. They come from all different walks of life. They come from all different backgrounds and ethnicities and life experiences, but they share this love of this content at its core. And that commonality is a place that they can all meet in the middle and and congregate. And too often, I think we we concentrate on everyone's differences and it's hard to find common ground. It's, it's hard to, to not be you know, back and forth and, and, and all about tension and conflict. Anime is a place where you come together and, and yes, there's debates and yes, there's tension and there's, you know, sub versus dub. There's, there's always discussions in a large community, but at its core, it is a community that comes together and I think operates and gives people a home. And that's why I think it works because 
it's 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 a comfortable place. It's 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 allowing people to be who they want to be uh, around people who share that with them. And and at the end of the day, we all crave that. I mean, you mentioned you mentioned uh, the the premieres. The, and, the, and the opening weekends. One of the reasons that works so well is people love to do this in real life. It's one thing to sit at home and watch a show and love it, but once you love it, getting in a theater with a bunch of people, like you said, hollering and screaming and understanding all the jokes and dressing up, it's a whole other level of experience. And we don't have enough of that today. There's not that many opportunities to do that sometimes. So people crave it and they love it and they come together and share it and we love that for them and hope to keep enabling that for as long as we possibly can well absolutely and uh i'm i'm glad to hear that uh it it, it sounds like uh you, you get it <laughs> and uh, i think that's a fear of a lot of anime fans out there is you know the people making these types of decisions don't understand the fan base don't understand that excitement and uh so that that's that's very encouraging thank you for everything um i, I think i've just got one more question here um sure. but uh th this one's a little bit more i think kind of background kind of higher up on the food chain there but with anime films like studio ghibli's the boy and the heron uh recently winning several high profile awards uh do you feel crunchyroll is approaching the position to be able to start pushing certain films for oscar nominations absolutely in, in all first of all congratulations to Born the Heron, phenomenal film. Uh, we were fortunate enough to distribute it ourselves in Australia, New Zealand, so it was great to share in that success. Um, you know, it's, it's great for the industry to see things like that succeed. Um, and yes, we absolutely um, are, are already there. I mean, we, we pushed uh, Susan May last year through the awards cycle. Again, a phenomenal film. I think we got a lot of focus on that. Uh, we didn't ultimately get nominated for an Oscar, but we were in the conversation, and I think the fact that we were in the conversation in a meaningful way is good for anime fans, and it's good for anime as a genre. Or, sorry, I just said genre, didn't I? It's been this whole interview talking about it's not a genre, <laughs> but it's it's good for anime as a business uh, because it it it's another way of showing that look, this is this is here to stay. This is this is having impact. People are noticing what's going on there. Um, so yeah, I look forward to many more opportunities to find amazing films like that bring them forward to critics to the public and push for those kind of things and, and hopefully continue to get recognized uh through all these award seasons for the incredible work these filmmakers put into this content uh, because it is always a labor of love and it's it's always gratifying for me to see that labor of love acknowledged and rewarded excellent excellent answer and uh I, I might have one extra bonus question if we've got sure. time um yeah. you, you kind of you kind of brought up the creators behind the anime and um with with a lot of series like uh, jujutsu kaisen season two just wrapped up uh there's quite a bit of controversy with uh some animators from uh, mappa you know kind of coming out and putting to light the extreme crunch culture the uh extreme deadlines low wages um for a lot of animators of the series that so many people love to see and enjoy um what what, what would you recommend for fans uh, what is the best way to support these artists who are help bringing these series to life so i think for us we we look at a way uh, to bring anime legally to to fan bases everywhere um, you know, we, we all know that there's anime content available out there. Piracy exists across all of entertainment. Uh, and unfortunately, when you when you pirate content, you're hurting creators. Ultimately, they're, they're the ones who, who bear the brunt of it. Um, so we're we're really excited about being able to bring Crunchyroll as a streaming platform and as a distribution company uh, worldwide to give people that opportunity um, to legally consume anime and support the industry um, and be part of that part of the culture and again help it grow and share that with their fans at the end of the day it is all about the fans to us and allowing them access to that content that's what we're focused on excellent uh well thank you so much for your time uh mitchell and uh, i too am very excited for uh, chainsaw man's return uh that was yes. one of those series that was so good i read up on the manga i'm all caught up and uh yeah. i'm really thinking the next movie is a good arc but that whole arc after that is Oh boy, there's some cool are... stuff coming. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> I cannot it. wait. <laughs> Same, man. Well, uh, I'll be sitting here watching uh, watching it on Crunchyroll and enjoying it with everybody. And uh, thanks again for your time. Thanks, Jake. I appreciate it. Great to meet you. Have a wonderful day.